Okay, moving along on to chapter 7, which is going to be our tail rotor assembly. We'll need parts out of trays 1, bag 5.1, and bag 5.2. The tail rotor assembly is going to be similar to the, to the head assembly in the fact that on this tail rotor setup on this machine, it's actually using what I guess you would call a feathering shaft, just like on our head. Um, there's dampeners in here as well, just like on the head, thrust bearing assembly. And then of course our tail pitch slider which will go on. We'll get some of that stuff lined up and come back and review. Okay, so here are the parts we're going to need for the tail rotor assembly. We've got the blade grips. we got our uh, tail shaft with its spindle just like a head. we got uh, a dampener in each side and a washer that goes up against the dampener between the blade grip bearing so it has something to ride on so it doesn't bind against that bearing against the dampener. Now just like the head assembly, we have thrust assembly washers and caged balls that go in there as well. Um, and if you remember in our head assembly, we have a large diameter. Get this slid over a little bit. We have a large diameter washer that goes to the inside and a small diameter washer that goes to the outside. However, if you look at this smaller diameter, there's play on there, right? It is less than the large diameter, but there is a little play. Now if we go to the other set, we have our large diameter, lots of play, and we have our small diameter, almost no play. Okay, here's another little variance I've found in the kit that seems to be just a little off. Maybe it could have been cotton quality control. Not quite sure. If we measure the inside of this small diameter washer, we get essentially 4 millimeters, 3.99. On this small diameter, we're getting 4.05 so there definitely is a variance there on both of our large diameter washers 4.27 those are exactly the same I don't know if this will affect anything or not However, I just thought I would point it out because it is an anomaly I found in my kit. Um, yours might not be the same. Yours might all be, you know, the right size diameter washers. I'll put this together. If there's an excessive amount of play in the blade grip, I'll probably contact SAB, find out if that's going to be an issue or not. I don't know. So I'll get this put together and we'll look at it uh, when it's finally assembled and see how much play there is from one side to the other. See if it makes a difference or not. So here we have the tail rotor assembly all together. I'm not noticing any extra slop or movement in either blade grip back here with one of the uh, thrust washer, thrust assembly washers being a little oversized compared to the other one. So probably be okay. I just it, it was something I noticed because you know we have to find out which one is the larger diameter, which one is the smaller diameter, so we can get that assembly in there correctly. And it just uh, it surprised me when I had three large ones and one small one. With that being said, the small one and the one that was just a little bigger than the small one was very close. It was just a little different, something I noticed. Um, I believe people should notice these types of things during their builds. Makes for a better build in the long run if you catch things like that, so you don't have any issues later on down the road. So that's the tail rotor assembly with the blade grips installed on the tail shaft. Now we're going to get our, bit, our uh, pitch slider together and put that on there and see what that looks like. 
So as we look at the manual here with the tail pitch slider assembly, make note that they're specifying on this link here the letter S in which orientation that needs to go. So pay special attention to that. You might skip over that in the manual. Um, it is highlighted in red with a little arrow next to it so you should be able to see that just fine. Make sure and get this spacer installed in here as well. Don't just put this link inside with the bolt. Make sure and get that spacer in there as well. So I'm going to get that together and then we'll come back and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we have the assembled tail pitch slider, just like the manual here for reference. We have the letter S facing up on this side. And as you rotate the assembly, it'll be the same on the other side. So they face opposite of one another. Okay, continuing on with chapter 7, the tail assembly, we're going to need our tail pulley a 21 tooth pulley out of tray 1. We're going to have bags 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, and 5.6. Okay, so we're going to start with the tail side plate assembly. So we're going to need one tail side plate. We're going to need the three tail case spacers. We're also going to need the bell crank support. For the bell crank support, we're going to use 2.5 by 8 millimeter screws. And for the tail case spacers, we're going to use 2.5 by 6 millimeter screws. I'm going to get those parts assembled and then we'll come back. Okay, here we have everything installed on the tail side plate assembly. Make special note of the way this bearing faces. This side of the plate is the smaller side of the bearing. This side of the plate is the larger side of the bearing. This is an actual flanged bearing so when it's pressed into the carbon the flange side is going to go to the inside or the side that the standoffs go to. So just make special note of that. Okay so now here we have the parts to our bell crank lever assembly. This being the bell crank lever. Okay we have a couple of bearings that are going to go on either side of the bell crank lever. We also have a crush sleeve or spacer that they're calling it in the manual. We have a uniball which will go in the end of here. And then we also have these tail pins which are going to key into the tail pitch slider itself. Like so. So I'll get that assembled and we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so I got the bell crank lever assembly finished. We have our bearings inserted. We have the sleeve inserted in between the bearings. The uniball threaded into the end here. The manual specifically states to use CA or super glue when threading this in, which makes sense. You're going into plastic. Loctite uh, a lot of times affects plastic. So we're using super glue here. It doesn't say to use super glue on either of these tail pins here. I myself put super glue in there as a precaution. Again, we're threading metal into plastic. They thread in very easily, so I put the super glue on there just to be safe. So now to finish up the tail system assembly, we're going to need our tail belt and our 21 tooth tail pulley. Um, the manual doesn't list the bag number for the tail pull or for the tail belt in its little. Um, area where it normally talks about the parts that you need for each step. The bag that this is in is bag 5-7. Um, I don't know if it's just a typo in the manual. If it is, I'm sure SAB is going to up, will update that later on down the road. But like I said, we will need the tail belt to finish the tail assembly along with the 21 tooth pulley. And just like in the pulley in the transmission, this is just loose fit in the kit, so we need to make sure and get Loctite on these bolts and, and snug this all up. So now we're going to finish getting the tail assembly together. We got our tail rotor output shaft, tail rotor blade grips, our bell crank, our side plate assembly, our 21 tooth tail pulley, our vertical fin, and our belt along with the miscellaneous nuts and bolts. We will start assembling that and then uh, we'll, we'll look at everything when we're done.
Alright, so there we have it. Tail rotor assembly complete.